This video introduces several of the most important definitions of the chorus, definitions that carry over to many branches of mathematics where linear algebra is applied. This material, as defined, is pretty abstract, but it gets down to the algebraic core of what linear algebra is about. So let me jump right into this rarefied air and do some definitions. First, a linear combination. Say that I have a finite set of vectors in some Rn, v1 up to vk. A linear combination of these vectors is some other vector that I can get by multiplying these vectors by constants, a1 times v1, a2 times v2, so on, and then adding all the results up. The multiplication scale all the vectors, and then I add up all the scale vectors, and the result is some new vector. I've defined a linear combination here for vectors, but the idea is very general. For any object that has addition and scalar multiplication, I can take linear combinations. There are, for example, linear combinations of polynomials, or linear combinations of continuous functions. The idea is very general. In this course, it's just going to be linear combinations of vectors, but it's good to realize the generality here. Next definition, again starting with a finite set of vectors. The span of the vectors is the set of all possible linear combinations. That is, the a1, a2 constants can be anything. And if I consider all infinitely many possible choices for them and look at all these outcomes, I get the span. It is almost always an infinite set of vectors since I have infinitely many choices for the constants. The vectors vi, though, are fixed here. This is the span of a fixed set of vectors with arbitrary choices of constants. The span can also be offset. This means taking the span and adding another fixed vector u to every element. The notation here needs a little explanation since it's a bit odd. The span is an infinite set of vectors, but u is just a vector. How can I add these together? Strictly speaking, I can't. But this is a notational shorthand that mathematicians use. What this means is that I add u to every, all infinitely many, vectors in the set, and I get a new infinite set of vectors. Let me talk first about calculating linear combinations. Sometimes I may wish to express one vector as a linear combination of some other vectors. Say I want to write negative 5, 3 as a linear combination of the two vectors 1, 1 and 4, 0. That is, I want to find a constant a and b such that negative 5, 3 is equal to a times 1, 1 plus b times 4, 0. If I look at the components, this turns into a system. In the first component of the left, I need 5 equals a plus 4b. In the second component, I need 3 equals a plus 0b, which is just 3 equals a. The second equation already gives me a equals 3, and I can use this in the first equation to replace an a with 3 and get the equation negative 5 equals 3 plus 4b. If I solve this for b, I get b equals negative 2. So I can write negative 5, 3 as a linear combination of the other two vectors with the constants 3 and negative 2. Now let me talk a little bit about what goes on in a span. The first important observation is that the vectors that define a span can be redundant. Consider this span, the span of just one vector, the vector 1, 2. The span is all linear combinations. For one vector, there is nothing to add together, but I can take scalar multiplications. So the span is just all scalar multiplications of the vector. The span is still infinite and includes all multiples, such as 3, 6, or negative 4, negative 8. Now consider this second span. It is the span of two vectors but the second vector is already a multiple of the first. Any sum of multiples of these is still a multiple of the original. Two times the first plus three times the second is just eight times the first, for example, since the second is already two times the first. Nothing new is added to the span by this second vector. It is redundant. This can happen in spans. Some vectors might not actually add anything at all to the span, I would like to encode this idea formally. This is done with the idea of linear independence. The formal definition is tricky, but let me start with it anyway. 
Again, a finite set of vectors v1 up to vk in Rn. Consider this linear equation where the ai are constants. The left side here is just a linear combination of the vectors. So say that the vectors are fixed, but the constants can vary as in a linear combination. I can ask, what constants ai solve this question? What linear combination of the vector adds up to zero? And the right side here is the zero vector, uh, not the zero number. We have vectors on the left, so equality, we must have vectors on the right. This equation always has one solution. I can just set all the ai to zero. Then the left side is just adding the zero vector a bunch of times, and the result is still the zero vector. The set of vectors v1 to vk is called linearly independent if this solution, all the ai are zero, is the only solution. That is, if there is no way to scale and add the vectors together to get the zero vector other than this trivial way. That is linearly independent, and a set of vectors is called linearly dependent if it is not linearly independent, sensibly. This is pretty hard to parse, so here's an example. Consider two vectors, 3, negative 2, and negative 6, 4. A linear combination of these is a times 3, negative 2, plus b times negative 6, 4, for some numbers a and b. If I am careful, I can choose a equals negative 2, and b equals negative 1. Then the first coordinate becomes negative 6 plus 6 equals 0, and the second coordinate becomes negative becomes 4 minus 4 also equals 0. These are non-zero choices for the constants a and b that lead to the zero vector in a linear, linear combination for these two. This is a non-trivial solution. Since it is a non-trivial solution, by the definition, these two vectors are linearly dependent, not independent. In the example here, you might have noticed that the problem was that negative 6, 4 is in fact a multiple of 3, negative 2, multiplied by negative 2, in fact. These two vectors point in the same direction. The best way to think about a linearly independent set of vectors is that all the vectors point in fundamentally different directions. You can't get to any directions from the other vectors. They all point somewhere different, from different from any combination of any of the other ones. This is why multiples fail to be linearly independent. They share a direction. This is the best geometric intuition. Linear independence means that all the vectors have fundamentally different directions. Finally, let me talk about how to actually check linear independence. I'll demonstrate by example. Here are three vectors in R3. A linear combination is a times the first plus b times the second plus c times the third. The equation to check linear independence is to take this linear equation and make it equal to, the, to zero, that is, equal to the zero vector in R3. I want to know if there's any solution to the system other than the trivial solution a equals b equals c equals zero. To solve this, I look at components. In the first component, I get zero a plus b plus two c equals zero, which is a linear equation. In the second component, I get three a minus b plus zero c equals zero, which is another linear equation. And in the third component, I get negative 6a minus b plus 7c equals 0, which is a third linear equation. Now I have a system of three linear equations and three variables, so I can solve. I'm not going to show the process here, but if there is a non-zero solution for a, b, and c, then the set is dependent. In this case, if you went through and solved the system, the only solution you would get would be a equals b equals c equals 0 and the three vectors are in fact linearly independent.